Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Compliance Online Live Webinar, Legate Risk, ensuring compliance with the CMS Hospital Corps and TJC requirements. Our speaker for today is Sudil Calloway, is a nurse attorney, a medical legal consultant, and a past chief learning officer for the Emergency Medicine Patient Safety Foundation. She is the immediate past director of hospital patient safety and risk management for the doctor's company. She is currently president of patient safety and healthcare education and consulting. So please go ahead. Why, thank you, Jenna, for that nice introduction. And welcome, everybody, to today's webinar, where we are going to talk about the CMS, Conditions of Participation, the new changes under two tag numbers, 144 and 701, in the Hospital Condition of Participation Manual. And also, about 80% of the hospitals in this country are accredited by the Joint Commission, so we will also go through the Joint Commission 13 rules uh, that are all fairly new, and we're seeing a lot of change. In fact, I, I think I've probably updated my PowerPoint presentation maybe eight times because, and, and we can expect more changes. This is what I call a kind of a moving target where um, we will continue to see updates. On slide number three, I always give you my phone number, and if you have a question, uh, you can give me a call. I, I don't accept emails because sometimes I don't get them or I don't understand them and I need to understand your question to be able to answer it. And then I have office hours <clears throat> Monday through Thursday from 10A to 10P Eastern Time, so feel free to call me. And just like if you have a question, uh, you can email it to jointcommission.org. Uh, when you go on the home page, there's a form you can fill out or you can call. For the first time, CMS has an email address that you can ask any questions that you might have on any of the CMS uh, conditions of participation, uh, which is normally what we call uh, those that 528-page manual uh, that we have to uh, follow. And David Ettinger is the one who is in charge um, of the CMS uh, program. Also, I have some additional resources uh, for you that I thought you might like. Uh, there's three documents that help you do an environmental assessment, so as you're walking through to figure out what puts patients at risk. And also, uh, I call it step one and step two. Step one is where we would always ask a few questions. Have you, um, you know, have you thought about killing yourself or harming others? And so step one is where we ask a few preliminary questions. And if those questions are positive, then we follow up with step two, which is a more detailed assessment um, of that individual. So I have, uh, and I won't go over all of them, but I have a lot of them. In fact, anyone that was, that was mentioned either by the Joint Commission in any of their resources or CMS, I've given you the website and uh, told you a little bit about those. So those are some additional uh, resources that I will point out for you uh, because there's a lot of scrutiny because this is all new. So I always get asked the question, uh, how in, in the past we've seen quite a bit of change. So how can we keep up with changes uh, in CMS? First of all, if you just have one or two people in your hospital who go out once a month, and just click to see if there's a new manual. Have one or two people who go out once a month and check the survey website uh, to see if there are any new memos. Uh, you can have them sign up to get the Federal Register. We have two significant proposed regulations uh, that are pending for hospitals, so when those would be final, you would know that. And, um, and again, as I mentioned, you can now email uh, questions to CMS directly. So here is the email address. Um, if you're a critical access hospital if you, and you don't know who that is, uh, they're usually 25 beds or less. They're usually 35 miles away from the next closest hospital unless there's mountainous terrain or secondary roads. So what has your hospital done to assess the risk uh, to patients that are uh, behavioral health patients to prevent uh, ligature, in other words, hanging themselves and uh, other, again, suicide and self-harm? Uh, what have you done to remove these risks? Do you have a policy and procedure? 
Has your staff been educated on the policies and procedures? Do you have enough staff to support the mitigation risk? And for uh, units that are not ligature resistant, uh, we're going to talk about how a lot of them are going to have to have a one-to-one. -one. Do you do an individual suicide assessment on each patient? One of the studies that we're going to that we're going to mention today, it said that half of all the people, all of the patients that committed suicide, had seen a physician or a provider within 30 days. And uh, I mentioned that I used to work two or three shifts a week in the emergency department, and the last hospital I worked at was for 20 years. And to have a ligature free or ligature resistant. And CMS uses the, both the terminology, and they use it to mean the same, ligature resistant and ligature free. Uh, please, for a legal and risk management standpoint, uh, don't use the term ligature free. Use the term ligature resistant. Uh, because if I have to go defend a case, I don't want the jury to keep saying, oh, this is ligature free, meaning that, uh, yeah, there's no way you can do that. And of course, it's, it's not true. Uh, but anyway, um, this first section is aimed at if you are a behavioral health or a psych hospital or you are a behavioral health unit. And just like the way Joint Commission does it, they, they give us the standards for the behavioral health hospital. And for example, I used to work at a hospital that had a 10-bed behavioral health unit. And then they tell you what the standard is for the rest of the hospital. Uh, so we'll talk about that first. So no matter where patients are, you still have to keep them safe if they are suicidal. And they're going to continue, uh, as I mentioned, the primary thing is they're going to cite you um, under in the environment of care, at least for now, under 020601 EP number one. And um, this standard says that uh, the internal spaces need to meet, needs to meet the needs of our patients. They need to be safe. Uh, they need to be suitable to um, provide care and service. And then I mentioned that they just recently uh, published that has of next month on July 1 that, um, again, there, if you have a deficiency, the Joint Commission will cite you under TAG 144 and, and, um, and not under physical environment, but they're also going to uh, cite you under TAG 144, which is a CMS one, and that's going to be some confusing for hospitals because they're not used to seeing Joint Commission. Joint Commission usually cites them to one of their standards and not to, to the CMS COP manual. And of course, you would want to take away anything if it was an outpatient area or a residential treatment, again, sharpening, sharp cooking utensils, knives, you know, again, things that could be if they're highly suicidal. And again, your staff would need to do an environmental assessment, the same thing. And then if they are in a place and all of a sudden they escalate, and maybe they weren't seriously suicidal before, but now they are, then you've got to have a policy, a process to keep them safe until you can get them admitted or transferred to a high level of care. And usually, if it's a residential treatment center, they'll either call and get them as a direct admit, or they'll come through the emergency department uh, and be admitted. And then the last rule is um, you need to have a policy, again, on how you're going to manage that patient um, if their symptoms increase and all of a sudden they're a danger to themselves or others. So again, they're escalating. So here is a good resource on how to train for suicide prevention. Uh, this is the Suicide Prevention Resource Center. This is a guide for emergency department staff on how to prevent, uh, you know, how to assess suicidal risk. Uh, this is uh, their website. Uh, this is the VA's uh, clinical practice guideline on how to assess and then manage patients that are at risk. Uh, we've already talked about zero suicide, and I gave you a lot of resources on that. 